Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we will start with an update of James Hollingshead, who basically announced that he is leaving Redcon 1. Now, the question is that everybody is wondering, as you can see, he turned off the comments. Why? Because everybody who is wondering would write there their assumptions, their questions, which is gonna be his new sponsor. And I am sure that like 70% of the comments would be, are you going to sign with Hostile? <laughs> because that would just make sense. I mean, he's a big part of that podcast that Fuad uh, is doing on YouTube. And uh, lately we have been seeing a lot of James. It would make a lot of sense since he's getting all that airtime. It would just make sense for him to represent Hostile. However, here as you can see, he says this is going to be his last month in Redcon 1 and then he adds a lot of words, a lengthy caption on how it was working with Redcon 1, all the good things, blah blah blah, but uh, you know, I'm guessing the reason why he's leaving Redcon 1 is first, he probably got a good offer somewhere else and secondly, uh, Aaron Singerman is in jail now and I don't know how well Redcon is doing but without Aaron to actually run things because he was very much in charge he was very much involved and now without him it's probably not the same anyways he's signing with another company and my first guess would be hostile but I heard on a grapevine that it's going to be another company actually not hostile some British company so which one is that which british company would make sense for james well the only thing that i'm thinking about is obviously i'm sure most of you can already guess trained by jp yeah jordan peters and james hollingshead have been working together before earlier but then also they have kept you know a good relation uh, they are talking they are friends and they are training together once in a while and also on a podcast on fuad's podcast i heard james saying some nice things about uh, trained by jp products and he said he is not related to them they are not sponsoring him but they have some good products some really good stuff that he's using and if he said that it probably means that he really believes in that company and he probably likes, I mean, him and, and, and Jordan are really good friends too, so it would really make a lot of sense, it would click well, and they have a very similar mindset, they are both freaks in the gym, they are very strong, so I, I just don't know if Trained by JP can afford James Hollingshead. So as I heard, James was paid quite a lot by Redcon 1, you know, he has been making a lot of money, and the train by JP, they don't really have some, like, big athletes like James, I'm sure they're doing well, as far as I know, they have the biggest bodybuilding subscription website, they are making a lot of good money just from that, and then also the clothing line is very successful, the supplements too, so they are doing pretty well, and uh, I don't know if they decided to go with this direction, you know, to, to sponsor professional bodybuilders at the top of the game, like top pros, who are also very successful on their social media, so it would definitely be a huge step for that company, and that's why I'm not sure if that's gonna be the case, maybe it's gonna be another British company, I don't know, this is just uh, speculation, we'll see, we'll find out soon enough, uh, anyways, for now we know that uh, James is no longer gonna be a part of Redcon 1. Real quick, before we move on, I just want to tell you guys about this product from the old school labs. It is called Vintage Brawn, and this is such an amazing whey protein. It is actually a combination of a whey isolate, it's also beef protein and egg white protein, but it is isolate, it's very low in carbs and fats, and it tastes so amazing, especially this new flavor. It kind of tastes like uh, sweet cafe latte with milk, something like that, I don't even know, but it's very, very delicious, guys, trust me. If you want to support this channel and myself, buy this product, try it out, use the link down below in the description of this video and use the code EVAN. Thank you guys so much, let's go now. Alright, next we have an update, an amazing update of Rafael Brandau, five days out of Arnold Classic South America and he looks absolutely freaking amazing now uh, i'm not saying uh, that he's huge or that he's a monster or anything like that no he's an aesthetic bodybuilder who improved quite a bit i mean take a look at these guys the left photo is romania pro 2021 which you guys know is a post olympia show and it happened quite recently half a year ago only half a year later 
look at him look at the changes that he has made he definitely made some progress uh this is five days out so this is as conditioned as he's going to get uh, he's gonna get more dehydrated and fuller for sure and he's gonna look better with the tan on other great lights and everything uh he's gonna look more impressive on stage but like the conditioning is there and you can definitely see that he filled up that frame the arms look bigger the chest looks fuller the shoulders, legs, like overall, he gained size, I don't know how much size, maybe they will talk about it, I believe his coach is Chris Asito, I'm not sure exactly how much progress he made, but this is obvious based on these photos, look at the biceps especially, I mean, yeah, the lighting, this is this is great lighting in the gym, I, I know, and the angle is a little bit different, he probably didn't make as much progress as it seems on this photo, but like, how much progress can you expect in half a year, how much progress did Regan Grimes make, basically none, and uh, Raphael, I mean, he didn't turn uh, like from a classic bodybuilder to a mass monster in six months, no, but it looks like he definitely made progress, and a lot of people would say that this is what bodybuilding is supposed to be, a lot of people are not crazy about the freaks like Big Ramy, like uh, Ian Valier, like, uh, I don't know, Hari Chopin also, like those rugged kind of freaky looking physiques, uh, they like to see something a little bit more streamlined, like Raphael, with enough muscle, so they don't really look like classic physique, you know, classic physique guys are much smaller than Raphael, let's be honest, but some of the top open pros are much bigger than Rafa, and as you can see right here, he looks so amazing, like these lines, the flow of the physique, uh, the conditioning that he's about to bring, uh, he even has a vacuum, this is just beautiful, this is just something that when you see this, and especially when you compare it to the big guys, I mean, pay attention to Big Ramy here mostly, when you look at Big Ramy, there are definitely, I'm sure most of you guys will find a couple of things that will throw you off, like, you would definitely prefer to see better conditioning, uh, something is off with Rami's quads, with the shape of those quads, I mean, let's not even talk about him hitting uh, abs and thighs, and this is also when he was younger, when he was more aesthetic, when his waistline was smaller, it still didn't look very much right, you know, something is weird about it, you don't love this physique, not every one of you, but the size is undeniable, but when you see a physique like this, I'm sure that like 99, probably 100% of you guys will say this is an amazing physique. I understand on the stage Big Ramy dwarfs him and that's why he smokes him, but just looking, looking at him right here, this is like, I don't know, Arnold with better legs, with fuller muscle balance, with more muscle, with more size, it just looks so good, it looks so amazing. And I really hope Rafael Brandao is going to do very well this year, this season. And I actually hope he's going to beat some of the uh, bigger, but less aesthetic, more rugged guys, more rugged physiques. Some of you will say, well, we have open for the freaks and we have the classic for the classic lines, uh, for the aesthetics and everything like that. And this is Chris Bumstead with his most recent physique update. And he looks great, he looks amazing, but even right now, and he says in the description here that he's heavy bulking. Even him heavy bulking, he's not even close to the size of Rafael Brando. Maybe he is close, I'm not saying that he's not even close, but he's definitely smaller than Rafael Brandao, so classic physique guys, they are much smaller than, than aesthetic open guys, there are some ideas thrown around that the classic physique should not have a weight cap, that it should be like man's physique, you know, that the look, the classic look is the criteria, but I don't know about that, that's definitely something to talk about, and we're not gonna do that in this video, uh, here we can just admire Chris Bumstead's off-season bulking physique, uh, he is growing, this guy, uh, lately, for sure, so he definitely took some time off after the Mr. Olympia, and now he's back on a full-blown bulking mode, uh, look at his arm, I mean, it looks like his arms are growing, this guy no longer has small arms, uh, bad insertions, sure, small arms, no, and he looks very hard also, like, for, for uh, this uh, period, uh, in his off-season, for pushing, like, for the mass, you know, bulking, uh, he's big and full, but still pretty lean, looks great overall, 
We also have another pretty, pretty impressive uh, transformation, let's call it, of Hassan Mustafa. Uh, these two photos are from different years. The first one, obviously, is 2021, and the uh, right one is the new one from right now. They are both taking the same time uh, out of a show, but look at the difference. Now, if you talk about the conditioning, you can see more lines, like thinner skin, especially in the legs and like uh, in the arms and everything. But then again, that can be just the lighting. It looks like it is artificial lighting on the photo on the right. And on the photo of the left, uh, it is uh, natural lighting. But really, the conditioning, it's not really what I'm, what I'm really paying attention to the most here. Uh, what I can see definitely, very clearly, is the improvements in the midsection. This is definitely a solid transformation. And I think it is mainly about controlling the stomach better. Uh, I think it's mainly the posing thing. I don't think he really made his uh, waist any smaller. I think he just learned how to flex it, how to pull it in, how to suck it in, uh, how to flex it while posing, which is definitely a very important thing today. And uh, it's definitely going to help him to place better, but nothing will help him unless he comes in condition for the first time in his life. And it looks like his conditioning is better at this point uh, uh, in time, like before the prep. And I just hope that they figure it out the reason why he wasn't able to, to make the conditioning. I don't think he was lazy. I, I heard that he was dieting like a maniac. It just still wouldn't happen. Uh, I think it was probably like a metabolic damage or something like that. And I'm thinking if they figure it out and if he's still like holding back and if he's not pushing it to the max right now, if there is more room uh, to make more changes, he's going to be shredded. And this guy is a freaking monster size wise. And if he comes shredded with a better controlled midsection, that's going to be our seriously dangerous package. And guys, we were talking about whether Blessing of Audible can make uh, seriously good results at the Indie Pro, like winning. And um, yeah, last year he was third, but this time around there are so many great guys that are going to be competing. And it's going to be very tough, you know, to crack one of those top spots because the competition is serious this year. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.